Now it's 2021. Uh, we celebrated, or we've been in business 100 years, or the crop duster industry, and that's what they started out doing was spraying catalpa trees in Ohio, and catalpa trees were used for telephone poles. And they had, at that time, uh, a, a moth would uh, uh, come in uh, uh, and lay eggs. And, and uh, uh, of course, the eggs were worms, and they'd chew on the trees and stuff. Well, uh, the trees would die eventually. Well, um, so they uh, um, they had a bunch of airplanes after World War one, you know, the, that's where the barnstorming really came in, and in, in uh, 20, uh, 1921, and and uh, uh, the guys were putting barrels in the front seat of the airplanes. A lot of them were two seat front and back, and they'd put cut holes in the bottom or drill holes in the bottom of a big barrel, whatever is 30 gallon or 55 gallon or whatever they had, and they'd use uh, arsenic dust. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so and and. Anyway, that's that's they fly over the trees and and it did a great job on the bugs, um, as you can imagine, and and uh, um, then the, that worked well. And then the, about that same time, the the, uh, um, the cotton down south, the boll weevil was coming in hard, and of course, cotton was a big one of our main one of the main crops being treated, especially in that area, and, and that was a world commodity even at that time, you know. And uh, anyway, they did the same thing on the on the cotton crops and, and save that, essentially, is what they said. And so that's when it really started, no pun intended, taking off uh, into being a, you know, a legitimate business uh, way back then. And like I say, we, uh, three years ago, it was our 100th anniversary, and we celebrated it. Or, I mean, it was... Well, I was on the fringes or tail end of the COVID thing, and and anyway, I uh, I and another guy found serial number one biplane, and it was down in Kansas, and and um, all the record books were with. Anyway, we bought it, and uh, it, well, he bought it, and he said, "You can fix it," and I said, "Or we can fix it." He says, and I looked at him and said, "What's this we uh, stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> I think I said something else that started with an S, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, so we got it and, and, uh, I ended up fixing it and, and, or restoring it. It flew, but it, it was since ni- it was 1959 AGCAT biplane, just like I've rebuilt a bunch of them. And anyway, uh, uh, we got it home. It was in, uh, uh, Hutchinson, Kansas is where it came from and and uh uh i had my pilot fly at home i i guess i'd flown him down there we flew down there in a, another airplane but uh um he flew it home and then we ended up just dis- disassembling it uh completely and basically a frame off restoration and uh i took it to our national convention and got it ru- i have it running and flying and everything and um uh, we're talking about one thing that was at our convention that we just got back from uh, the Smithsonian is is uh, uh, really interested always in serial number ones of anything and and uh, um, we've got one airplane in there. Well, we got actually uh, uh, Delta Dusters is a one of the first airplanes that they'd ever used. Uh, you know, way back in the twenties, and uh, that's in there. And then the Dusty Crop Hopper. If you remember that, yes, that from or, the orange and yeah, for planes movie, my kids watch that a lot. Exactly, and and uh, that's in there. And then they have a an A cat, uh, which isn't serial number one by any means, and it's far from uh, what serial number one really even look like. Uh, I mean, they got canopy on it, and and serial number one, the guy was essentially a barnstormer, just a little windshield about this high, and then you. St- hug, hunkered down you know to get out of the wind all the time and and uh anyway it's it's re- all back to original and 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 the smithsonian is i was just out there last week or for, for a national meetings and and i'm on the national board but um and they're doing a lot of remodeling now and and anyway it got brought up uh good friend anyway says uh we should get serial number one in in the smithsonian and uh, because the one that we have there is our, we is our industry, National Ag Aviation Association. 
and uh, we got an office right by two blocks from Capitol Hill. So we're, it's a, uh, our industry is well recognized in the, you know, in the agriculture world. We spray, take care of about a third of the crops in every year in the country. So, of the, you know, three hundred four hundred thousand acres in the in the country, we take care of a third of those. Uh, not four million acres. So that's what it is. It, um, so anyway, uh, um, so with back to serial number one, uh, where um, the administration, our executive director and assistant or whatever assistant are um, going to work pretty hard at uh, talking to the Smithsonian and maybe, who knows, it would, would be fun to get it in there. Yeah, so you are you currently restored? Are you all it's, done? It's restoring? done. It's, it's done. It's in the museum up here at the Air Fargo, oh, okay. yeah. at the Air Museum. Oh yeah. And uh, um, I just got a, I hauled it actually down to our national convention in in, uh, well twenty and twenty one. Uh, I was looking for parts in twenty because uh, I wanted to put it all back to original, and, and that helped a bunch. It wasn't near done, but uh, I took down there what I had, and and it was a the fuselage and a wing and tail and stuff and um, and a bunch of the parts I was looking for, which I got there. That was a huge... Then the next year, uh, the weather was so bad, uh, it, it would have taken me longer to fly it down there than, uh, well, it, <laughs> than driving. <laughs> and it goes cross-country at about 85 miles an hour, you know, so it it had been a long trip. And once you get down into the mountains there and, you know, the, uh, Georgia or getting closer, it... Uh, the valleys are closer than the and with trees on them and stuff. The weather can close in pretty hard, so I I thought it's safer to put it. We put it together then when we got it on the show floor and then disassembled it again and brought it back home and that's where it's at. Put it in the museum. It's in Fargo here now. So, but I'll fly it if that the Smithsonian deal would come along. I'd fly it out there because that's what they want. Yeah. So we'll see. That'd be awesome. And keep keep it posted. Yeah, that'd be extremely cool to have that down there. Yeah. So you said uh, it started out, did you say Illinois, is that right? For the trees that make... Catalpa uh, trees. Catalpa trees, okay. Yeah, those were uh, used for telephone poles, uh, telegraph poles, you know, that was our main communication back then. Yeah, so so it went from there, went down to the cotton fields down south. Mm -hmm. And then how, when do you think about it started coming up into like North Dakota and, and getting more... You, when do you when do you think the first guys in North Dakota were going? Well, Warren Walkinshaw from Argusville, North Dakota, just north here, uh, 12, 15 miles. Uh, he was an instructor in World War II, and and uh, uh, for and he one of the training airplanes was a Stearman airplane or aircraft that he actually after the war they had all kinds of of airplanes and and uh, um, being an instructor and what you could buy a Stearman probably for I, I think they said 500 bucks but it was, I think it was cheaper than that you, you know just depending on if you want a gas in it or not that gas was more expensive than the airplane that's just like the 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 warplanes the warbirds like the Mustang uh, you could buy a Mustang for 1500 bucks it cost 50,000 at that time to build well now they're now they're <laughs> worth a fair amount more but but anyway uh, Warren uh, bought a bunch of the Stearmans, uh, I think for somebody said for 500 bucks and, and that's how he started. He took in, you know, as a front and back seat and, uh, the, the students sat in the back all the time and, and, the, the Warren or the instructor was in the front. And, uh, anyway, the, uh, how they made the, made that a crop duster airplane was, uh, uh, a tank in front, not not a barrel so much, but a tank, uh, a fiberglass tank, and and uh, it's probably about 200 gallons or something like that. And and then the the airplane they could have a, a 450 horsepower or 600 horsepower on that, and it was probably it was a pretty good airplane. You know that was as good as they had at that time. And then and that was from 40, 46, 47. I think he started in business up up at Argusville as his home town or home place there and then 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 uh the crop dusting industry really grew after that uh um you know a bunch of guys down south also did the same thing with the steerman and but anyway then the first uh actual spray plane was an acad it was a biplane that looked a little bit like a steerman uh, but uh, that's what 
uh, serial number one is, is an ag cat, and that came around in 1958 is actually when it was licensed. Uh, and that was really the first company that commercially built airplanes to for spraying, uh, 1958, and, and uh, uh, they were in business until uh, 95 was the last uh, biplanes that they built, and, and uh, then went to uh, air tractors or single-wing turbine airplanes, you know. Uh, the old radial engines of World War II uh, were getting uh, used up, parts were getting used up and getting more expensive if you could find them, and, and the turbine just, uh, uh, that's pretty much what most of it is anymore, is the turbine is a lot more reliable and, and, and uh, safe and, and uh, more efficient. Uh, we had, we ran about four ag cats biplanes and now we've run two turbines full-time so there's at least double what the what you could get done with the other airplanes <laughs>